Sydney, please come in. Sit down. Oh, great job on that skit you did last Sunday. The congregation was truly blessed by its message. Now, what can I do for you? Thank you. Pastor, I have done everything that I know how to do to stay focused and to maintain an image of the best Christian that I can possibly be. Well, with the exception of one or two things that, I, that I'm not entirely proud of. But I'm still struggling with my sexuality. I love God and, and I am grateful for so many things that He has done in my life. And the last thing that I would want to do is to, is to let Him down or, or disappoint Him. I know what the Bible says about homosexuality. I have read the scripture verses in Romans and in 1 Corinthians in the New Testament over and over and over and over. And I'm sorry, but I don't believe that they apply to me or any other gay and lesbian individual who has truly committed their heart and soul to God. I, I don't see myself using my sexuality as has worshipped a god or, or any false gods for that matter. I believe that is what those specific scriptures are referring to. In those scriptures, the, the people are described as godless, vile, offering up their flesh and their sexual acts as, as, as a sacrifice to whatever god of the month. The, the people, they had no feeling of right or wrong, guilt or morality. Morality in the sense that they, that they didn't care about what they did with their bodies or who or what they did it with. They, they had no concern or, or sympathy for their fellow man. They were consumed by lust, not love. Greed, not generosity. Violence, not peace. I'm 21 now. And I have not been with another man. I have with a woman, even against my better judgment. The desire, no. The longing, the longing that I feel within my being is to still be with another man. It's not a, a sexual lust, it's, it's connection. Companionship, commitment. I still feel like a Christian. I still feel the presence of God's Holy Spirit. I'm not afraid that if I walk into a church, I'll, I'll instantly be consumed by fire because I'm walking on hallowed ground. I don't believe that it works that way. Pastor, I, I have learned so much from you. You have always been there for me. You were there when my father passed away. I look up to you. I value your counsel. Pastor, please. Please say something. Please. Sydney. Sounds like you've made up your mind. I have tried everything that I can in my power to guide you in the right direction. But you have clearly chosen a path that will be full of darkness, confusion, pain, and you will ultimately spend eternity suffering for this decision. But Pastor, I didn't choose. Do you honestly think that I would risk losing my friends or my mother's love? Just a look of disappointment on your face. It's enough to tear my heart to pieces, and the last thing that I would ever want to happen is for God to turn his back on me. Sydney, I will pray for you. I will pray for your deliverance. But until that happens, I cannot allow you to continue to be a part of this congregation. I know, I know that may sound harsh, but I will not knowingly have an individual who has been blinded by a deceptive and dark spirit into my church I cannot trust what you might say or do in front of the congregation, much less the children, 
Pastor, please! You can't trust me with the children! I'm sorry, Sydney, but I must ask you to leave. I never looked back. So I did what every other person does when they've been kicked to the curb and basically told that they were nothing but a piece of shit headed for hell. I played each day as if it were the last day of my life. I guess you could say I, I sowed some wild oats. <laughs> Heck. I knitted, crocheted, cross-stitched, latch-hook, quilted, and macrameed my oats. It was as if I was trying to prove to the world that I am gay. Hey.